Hello everyone, I am Toby back here with another Minecraft video and sorry if I sound a bit ill, I woke up feeling a bit bunged up and stuff, but here is my top three essential building tips and tricks. Now these are tips and tricks to basically improve your builds 110%. So starting straight off over here, we have got the three on the signs and examples. We have structure or support, or support or structure, depends which way I wrote it. So here is platform A. This platform... Uh, is your generic Minecraft platform. It doesn't look too structurally stable, does it? It's just got one pole with this platform around it. That looks like in real life it will topple over, but since this is Minecraft, there isn't physics, so it won't topple over. But what makes builds look good is when it relates to real life and has a structure and looks like it can be supported. So here is platform B, which is just a platform like this one, exactly the same size look, except it's got more support around it and more structure with these pillars, with the um, uh, walls and stuff for structurally support and it looks a whole lot more stable and therefore makes your building look better in my opinion. So would you rather that in your world or that in your world? That's what I'm saying. What looks better? There you go, this one. Of course it is. Oh, I punched a hole in it. <laughs> but that is one way to improve your... I will show s improve your building skills. I'll show another example of structural support now. It is with this building here. With this building, if you just had this roof bit floating without these supports and just ran and it just wouldn't look right, would it, if all these supports were gone? That just doesn't look right. It looks a bit odd. It doesn't look real. But if you put the supports in, it just adds something else to the build. There you go. And it, and it also looks like if you use wood here as supports, it looks like it's got a frame. It looks like it's supported rather than just a wooden box. It looks like a proper supported build. And that is what makes buildings look really good because they relate to you in real life and relate how buildings have to have a structure. I mean, my house is made out of big timber beams and right behind my computer there's this huge beam with like uh, the equivalent of real life wood stairs coming off it. And that basically is how I get inspiration of using pillars and beams and stuff to hold up my stuff because it's literally what's holding up my bedroom right now. I can see it and it really relates to real life, how things have a frame, how things have a structure. So rather than just building like a random floating house, I always like to build one with a structure. Even if it is floating, it has to have a structure like a big floating island underneath it which shows some magical power. It has to have a reason for floating. It has to have a structure support, a reason for being able to stay up. So where this one, you could probably balance it, but as soon as you walk on one of the corners, it'll topple over. This one feels a lot more structurally stable and therefore makes your build feel more real and then people can relate to it in real life. Alright, the next thing we've got on our list is depth slash detail. Now this one is one I use a hell of a lot but not nearly enough as some people I know. They're just detail freaks. I'll show an example of detail in a minute, trust me. But here is uh, here is wooden wall A for a house. Very flat. It's got a couple different textures but again very very flat. And here is whoop, wooden wall B got some different textures in there with the other wood, got some signs, got a, uh, an indent with a fence in it just to break up a different window, and some trapdoors for shutters, and tell me which one looks better. Well, that's right, wall B. And that is reason because... That is reason because. I can talk, I promise. That is because it has more detail and it makes your builds look more impressive by using things the way they're not supposed to be used. So these buttons don't actually have any function, they're just there for detail. These signs don't have anything written on them, it just looks more structural. These trap doors are different, they're used for structures and the fence is used for a window. Stairs are used to make an indent. Just use things how they're not supposed to be used to add detail. And it really does make a difference to your builds. So here are some builds where I've done a lot of detailing which is this one here, this one here, all my builds I try to do detailing but just imagine this being completely flat with that it just wouldn't look anywhere near as impressive would it? so that is why you need to add detail to your builds and some really really good ways to do that is by having a double layered wall so you have the first layer which is actually pretty much very similar to this wall here just without any of the detail on it just with the indent and the fence and in front of it we've got a different texture and a different colour to detail it with different indents, different styles, different areas and it just looks a lot better and then we got the signs going across it like we have over there and that really just breaks up the solid wood texture in my opinion and then up top here look 
we just have even more detailing with the roof look how detailed that is it's just got different indents different stuff and same with the inside of here look these bits here are very indented and stuff and then there's the lantern up here as well but that's why detailing is very important here's another type of detailing it's overgrown detailing i like to call it it's where you add a load of vines leaves and grass to your roof and something to make it look like this has been here a long time, it's overgrowing, it lives in a climate which overgrows easily, so this was, is meant to go in a swamp if you can't tell. And it's very, very overgrown and it's just another type of detailing to add to your builds. And on to the final tip is breaking the texture. As you can see, I've done that quite a bit, rather than this having three textures, this has now got like four or five. It's got like loads more textures than it had before, this has got a ton more textures. Like this, is, it's got so loads of textures with all the different stones, the woods, the trapdoors, the grass, the flowers, everything. This has got tons of textures with all the greens, the water adds into that as well. Trapdoors just to add a little brightness on top of that wood. Texture breaking up is very, very essential. And this is what a normal gravel path would look like. Very similar to the ones I did in my Kingdom of Walmart, I wasn't hugely happy with, I wish I had spent more time on the path. And this is an example of a path with broken up textures, and it looks a lot more natural, it looks a lot more broken, looks a lot more better, a lot more better, that's what it, well, that's what it looks like, it's just a whole lot better if you break up the texture. Here's an example of a path here, I mean just look at this, a lot better than just a gravel path going places. So that is my three building tips. I will show you some more examples of detailing and structure on my friend Five Loves Plot, or if you didn't know his YouTube is Medieval Architect. He's done some videos on this, so I'm sure he wouldn't mind me going to check it out. It's on a different server. It's on the Exumavoid Plot World server. And I must I am in his plot in a helicopter. This is awkward. Let me just, oh god. His place is extremely laggy. I just need to get a quartz slab out to fix that. But this place, this guy is the king of detail. Look at this place. This is the inside, but just look how much detail, depth, breaking up the texture. He's used everywhere. And look how impressive it looks. Just because the build is big doesn't mean it's imp impressive. Just because it's big. But just because, look at this. This is the build. And that just looks something you would see in real life. So here you've got an archway he's done a video very similar where it's structures and lines and architecture and use these archways to ex explain in minecraft how architecture works it's really cool but basically it relates to real life and all the archways all the big towers show how this build is supported and it's really 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 good and also the fences and the cobblestone wall the different textures are just breaking it up using things where they shouldn't be look there's a brewing stand anvils trap doors banners crazy amounts of texture breaking up if we go inside you'll see the exact same in here look just a ton of stuff to add detail to this build the chandelier is absolutely insane there's just a helicopter just inside but seriously this is how good your building can get if you add the amount of detail that is required and seriously though that is absolutely insane so let me just hop back to this one this is a uh, fluff server i play on it and here we go that was our thing so remember top three building tips structural support make your builds look structured make them look supported make it look real so there's no physics that wouldn't make sense in real life everything looks real and that really does help bring the build to life in my opinion it makes it feel real to you it makes it feel too real to anyone else who sees it like yes i could see that in real life does this look even like minecraft anymore but seriously adding structure and support to your builds really really does help next up detail and depth these sort of go into the same category that's why i bunch them together is just making your builds look more detailed and uh, honestly better than just a flame a, a flame a flat plain wall like this one this is a generic minecraft house it's kind of like one of the villager houses in the village very very flat not too interesting got a couple different textures but really not that interesting but uh, whereas this one got some depth got some different textures thrown in there got loads and loads of detailing on it it's like kind of over detailed in my opinion maybe kind of i don't know but when you combine that with um this over here by making it a double layered wall that really does start to make detailing look really good 
So if you just add in different stuff, that's annoying me how that's dirt. I'll probably change that. But seriously, just look at what detail can do to some of these builds. Like whereas this would just be normal flat, I've uh, brought out the top floor, gone in the lower floor, make it just look a lot more detailed than it needs to be, but it still makes it look absolutely insane. Here as well, look. Uh, another detail you could do is connect a fence gate to a trap door next to another fence gate. It kind of makes it look a bit weird because it, the um, cobblestone wall brings down the fence gate that's connected to it. So that ends up looking quite cool. And you can use stuff for windows that you wouldn't generally think you would use. So here there isn't actually a window, but there should be. Um, there we go. Uh, fence gates are used for these windows because they fit in in my opinion with this build it's really just add detail and depth other detailing you can use is the overgrown detailing of course that really adds a lot to the build and we've been going on for 10 minutes discussing three points that's why these are so in-depth and so good to improve your building skills this is how my building skills have come to what they are today which i am quite proud of them to be honest and the last thing of course breaking up the texture using one texture for a wall or maybe even just two gets very boring after a while, especially if the build is big. So with something like a path, instead of just using gravel, use a load of different stonish textures. I mean, you can even add in some depth to the path as well. Something I like to do is just add in maybe a cobblestone, oh, yeah, cobblestone stair to make it look like there's like a tile missing in it. That actually also adds quite a bit to the build. That's something I really do like to do. So breaking the texture up by using multiple textures, you can see it here. Over here especially, there are loads of textures going on there just makes the build stand out more to your audience and makes it look a lot better so if you're trying to build to impress anyone like as in on a server and like you're doing a building competition or you're playing build battle just try and add in the subtle details at the end the details that you really think won't make a difference but really really do that's going back to detail and also breaking up the texture use a lot of different textures as you can see this is my block palette i know i spent it wrong please don't shout at me in the comments but this is all the blocks i tend to use <laughs> when building so there's a lot of them it's a five there's 25 there in total it's a five by five i'm pretty sure one two three four five technically it's a five uh, four by five with a one random so it's about 21 different blocks but that's still one block so we'll count it as 20 different blocks that i tend to use i'm pretty sure i used every single one of these blocks more or less on these things except the spruce wood log i'm pretty sure i used on this house here crazy crazy stuff it's just the stuff it's just the stuff that i can use basically you need to find your own style find your own block palette find your own details i actually need to add some stuff to this uh which is of course buttons i'll put one on there i forgot to put buttons on it and then everything else here is what i've got we'll stick that there so it stands up and you can see the texture but that is my block palette, and as you can see, it's got a very different depths of the blocks. They're not just all blocks, they're different stuff that you wouldn't generally use. Again, another place to find some really cool block palettes, if you have no idea, is the Exumavoid Plot World server at Fluff's Pot. Uh, Pot Fluff's Plot. He's got a museum of inspiration. I would definitely check it out. He does vehicles, statues, block palettes, crazy, crazy stuff in there. I always just hang around there. But seriously, though, go check that out. But seriously, how to improve your building skills is this is basically a sequel to that video. You guys seem to enjoy that quite a bit, so I decided to make a kind of sequel which is top three tips and tricks for building. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'm out. Like, comment and subscribe because it helps the channel and I'm going. Goodbye. I'm going to connect this path up. I'm going to connect the path up to this one. Path, 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 path. This is how this is how you path. How to path. Uh, this path is also featured in How to Brighten Up Your Minecraft World. I would recommend watching that if you don't know how to do that. I don't know what it even broke. I think it was gravel. And then the last one I need to put in is cobblestone. There we go. So we connected up that path. I'm going to do this off camera. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.